Hello and welcome again to English Like a Native with me, Anna English. Seems we've been having some computer problems today, so hopefully this stream will run unaffected. And if it does get affected, I'm so sorry. So fingers crossed we can do the lesson without any further problems. So if you are just joining for the first time, this is a lesson on the most common and most confusing homophones. Yes, homophones can be difficult, even for us natives. Now, if you are unsure what a homophone is, then let's get straight into it and explain. So, as always, I've made some notes and we're going to jump straight over to those now. So, a homophone. A homophone is a word that sounds the same as another word, but has a different meaning and sometimes a different spelling. In fact, in the cases that we're going to cover today, most of them have a different spelling. So a homophone is a word that sounds exactly the same as another word, but it has a different meaning and usually a different spelling. So here is an example, the example rose, rose. And you'll see I've put next to the word the phonetic spelling. So for those of you who know phonetics, this is how you spell the phonetic version. And a rose can either be a flower, so a beautiful flower, we tend to have a lot of roses here in the UK and they, are, they can be very romantic. To get a red rose is a very romantic gesture. If you give someone a red rose, it usually means you love them. Um, and it can also be the past tense of the verb rise. So I would say, I rose this morning at 6am, which is very early. Okay, so let's move straight into it. I have already covered these once, but I'll go over them again for those people who are just joining. So firstly, we have the words there, there, and there. Three words that I'm always asked the pronunciation of. And the short of it is, the pronunciation for all three words is exactly the same. So we have there, very simply, there, there. The first version there is location. So you might ask, where are my keys? And I would say they are over there. So there is a location that is away from you. It's over there, there. And then the second version of the word there is a pronoun. And I would use this pronoun when talking about other people. So for example, you might say, where are your friends? And I would say, they are on their way. They are on their way. Okay, and the last version of the word there is a contraction of they are, they are. So you'll notice in the last sentence I said, they are on their way, but I could say, they're on their way. They're on their way. Or I could say, they're here. They just arrived, they're here, they are here. So there, there, and there, all exactly the same. <gasps> so it's super important that you really think about which version you're using when you are writing in English. When you're speaking, of course, it doesn't matter because they all sound the same. But when you are writing, that's when it becomes important. Which version are you using? Location? Are you using the pronoun or the contraction? there. So make sure you write the correct version. Now another one which is commonly used and I commonly see a mistake in writing is the um, is the homophones your, your. So the first one is a pronoun, your. Um, that is your coat, here, 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 what's that? Here you are, here you are. This is your coat, isn't it? Oh no, that's not my coat. I thought that was your coat. No, it's not my coat. So your, or you could use your meaning the contraction of you are. The contraction of you are. Um, so I might say, where are you going? Um, sorry, so I, yes, I would say, um, where are you going? And you would say, I'm going to a party and you're coming with me. Am I? How exciting. I would love to go to a party with you. Good, because you're coming with me, I told you. All right. 
So your, the contraction of you are, is exactly the same as your, the pronoun. Your, your. Notice that we don't curl into the R in that. We don't say your, just the vowel, or, your. Okay? So I have quite a few of you back in with me. Thank you for rejoining me. Sorry about that little technical hiccup. Um, these things happen and hopefully you are receiving me loud and clear without any further problems. So we have also the, the homophones two, two and two. So the three homophones all pronounced two, two. Very, very simple. And the first one, I would say, is one of the most common words, and that is the preposition to. Now, there are lots of different ways to use this word, um, but I've just basically put it as preposition to indicate, or, sorry, or to indicate the infinitive when before a verb. So, I'd like to go, I'd like to eat, I have to walk, I have to work, I have to ride my horse. I have to feed my camel. <laughs> I don't know why I'm saying these strange things. But um, yes, to indicate the infinitive just before a verb or for preposition. I'm going to town. I'm going to Mexico. I'm going to Brazil. Um, so two, nice and easy. And then we have the number two, spelt T-W-O, two, which is very, very easy. One, two, three. And then we have... This one, which a lot of natives struggle with, in fact. So if you can learn to use this version of two, then you are doing a lot better than many natives, I promise you. So two can be used like the word also. So if I said to you, I really like cheese. I really like cheese. You could say, yes, I do too. I do also. Um, I really like speaking to you during my live lessons. And you can say, I like your live lessons too. I like your live lessons also. So too with double O means also. And it can also mean excessive. So I could say to you, you, you speak too loudly or you're speaking too loud oh, please quieten down, you're speaking too loud, you're speaking excessively loud, or many of you have said to me, Anna, I like your live lessons, but you are too quiet, you are excessively quiet, please sort it out. Um, and think of another example, I, I can't see you today because I am too busy, I'm excessively busy. So try to remember that one because you will be you will be further ahead of most natives when using the English language if you can remember that to meaning also or excessive is spelt with two o's t o o Okay fabulous uh let's move on hello hello to my patrons i hope you're still here with me some of you chatting in the chat room i'll come over to you in a minute so the next ones we're going to look at are here and here, here. It's a diphthong, ear, ear. And then we have this lovely aspirate H. Some of you, depending on your language, might constrict the H, but we don't do that in English. We make it nice and aspirated. So a sound here, hi, hello, come here, here. I can't hear you. So, of course, we have here, spelt H-E-R-E, -E, here, and that is the location. So, it's exactly where I am right now. It's this location. I am sat right here. Um, where are you? You're not here, but some of you are here in the chat room. You're just not here in my office, in my studio. And then we have the other version of here, which is um, to indicate listening. So it's the verb for listening. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you loud and clear. I can hear loud and clear. And hopefully with this microphone right here, 
you will be able to hear me properly. So my microphone is here in this location and I hope it means you can hear me properly. Let me know if you can't. Um, I am going to get a new microphone at some point soon, I promise. One that actually looks nice and has good volume levels and isn't about to fall off like this one is. Um, okay, so the next one that we have is the um, homophones by, by, and there's three versions of this word. So we have by, by, and by. So the first one is a preposition and again it indicates location most of the time. There are other there are other uses for the word by, but usually we think of it as a preposition. So um Bernard sat by Benjamin. Bernard sat by Benjamin. It kind of means next to by. If I'm driving and I'm on my headphones talking to my friend and she says, oh, um, you're quite close to me. Why don't you stop by or why don't you drive by and say hello? And I go, okay, I will drive by and I will park by your house and I will come and see you. So by is a preposition. And then you have the word by meaning to purchase. Um, I I drove by the shops and I stopped to buy some groceries. I drove by the shops on the way home and I stopped to buy some groceries. And then when I finished shopping, I said bye to the shopkeeper. So buy in this sense basically is a leaving statement. It's like saying goodbye, goodbye. So by, by, and by. So just one more time, I drove by, preposition, to be next to, I drove by the shops, I stopped to buy, to purchase, some groceries, and when I finished, I said, bye. Okay, fabulous. Hello, Tasha, you're doing a fabulous job there in the chat room, typing down some of the things that I've written. Thank you very much. That's really great. Um, so if you have any problems with this, please do let me know and I'll try to explain it again to make sure that you don't um, that you don't find anything too difficult. Okay, so the next set of homophones that we're looking at are no and no. Lots of people ask me about the, pr the pronunciation of this and the answer is they sound exactly the same. It's a very simple diphthong sound with a nasal n, 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 no. Look how my lips move. No, 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 no. I don't know. No, I don't know. There are many things I don't know, but hopefully I'm learning. So know in this sense obviously means to have knowledge. If you know something you have knowledge of it. And then also we have the word know which can mean many things but generally it's the negative response. I'm sure all of you know what the word know means. Yes, no. So know and know. Nice and simple. Now the next one um, so Sagbo has just said, what is the difference between by and by in terms of pronunciation? So Sagbo, the whole point of this lesson is that these words all sound exactly the same. They are exactly the same in sound, in pronunciation, which makes them homophones. A homophone is a word or group of words that sound exactly the same, but have different meanings and different spellings in some cases. Okay, so the next one that we're moving on to, the next set of homophones is um, stare, stare. So we have two versions here, stare and stare, stare and stare. So the word stare in this sense means a long fixed look. So if I look at you and I continue to look at you like this, you would say, why are you staring at me? 
Stop staring at me, Anna. It's making me feel weird. You're creeping me out, you might say. You're creeping me out. I'm staring. And then the other version of the word stare, spelt like this, you normally see it with an S on the end, so you normally hear stares, stares, zzz, with a Z sound, stares. And this is a set of steps that takes you to the next level in a building. So if I walk into a house and I want to go up to the next level, I normally have to walk up the stairs. So I walk up the stairs and stare at the person sitting in the bedroom. What are you doing in the bedroom? Get out. Go to work. Okay, so stairs and stare. Okay, nice and easy, I think. All right, so the next one we have... Oh, Thiago, thank you so much. So Thiago has just dropped a super chat contribution to this community and written, God save the queen. (laughs) Thank you, Thiago. That's very, very kind of you. Very much appreciated. And don't forget, anybody who drops a super chat contribution. So Thiago, Ella and Julia, who dropped super chats previously before the, before it failed. Um, you are all entitled to a copy of these notes that I've written. So just email me and ask for the notes that you want and I will send them to you. Okay, so the next ones we have are weather and weather, weather. Let's look at the pronunciation of this one. It can be tricky. We have the W, which is rounded lips, W, 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 and then TH, tongue out, the, W, the, weather, weather. And the first version of the word weather, we talk about this a lot here in the UK. We're talking about the atmospheric state. So we're talking about it's sunny, it's raining, it's windy. At the moment, in fact, the weather in the UK is very nice. Yesterday, it was terrible rain. We even had floods. It was so bad. But today is beautiful sunshine and quite hot in temperature. So weather. Then we have the other version of the word weather with a WH. And this is a conjunction to indicate choice. So I would say to you, um, whether you decide to come home now or come home later, I will be here. Whether you decide to come home now or come home later, I will be here. Okay, so weather and weather. All right, so the next one is a homophone that even I struggle with. And I, I, this is a very difficult one, I think, in general. And this is the one effect and effect. Now, the basic versions of these are quite simple to remember. Affect, basically, it's a verb. Um, It indicates influence, influence. So I might say, if you speak loudly, it will affect everybody else in the room. If you speak loudly, it will affect everybody else in the room. So it's to have an influence on, it's to have an influence on someone. And the word effect is a noun and it's the outcome. So you will most commonly hear this word when we're talking about medicine or treatment, medical treatment, because we talk about side effects, side effects. Or if you work in media, you might talk about sound effects or lighting effects. If you work in media or in the theatre, then the effect is the noun. It's the thing that has been influenced, the outcome of the influence. So affect is the verb to influence and effect is the noun of the thing that has been influenced. Okay, that's the easiest way to put it. But there are some much more complicated versions of these words, which I won't go into now, I think need a completely separate video um, to help explain them clearly. But yes, I definitely learned something while looking into these two difficult words. So the next one we're going to look at then is stationary and stationary, stationary and stationary, both exactly the same pronunciation. And sorry, just to go back, these words, 
The beginning letter becomes a schwa when it's spoken in a sentence. It becomes a, effect. Effect and effect, both the same. All right, so stationary. If we spell it with an A, stationary, then it's something that's not moving. Normally, it refers to vehicles. So you could say the train was stationary in the station or um, the car was stationary at the time. It didn't, it wasn't moving at the time of the accident. The car was stationary. And then we also have the word stationary spelt with an E here. So you have the E here. Stationary, this in this sense means office or writing materials. So things like paper, pens, um, sellotape, tipex, a hole punch, a ruler. So stationary. Okay. I think that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so moving on to one, two words that are, I commonly see mistaken when written down are the words are, are. Now, in some cases, this word is pronounced differently in some cases and you can use either version. So some people will say our, 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 they use a diphthong, our. And in some cases, you might hear the same person also use the version R, long vowel, R. And when they use that version, it's a homophone, R and R. So the first R, spelt A-R-E, is the present tense form of the verb to be. So um, we are, we are happy, we are here, um, we are friends, we are learning. Nice open vowel. Notice that we don't roll into the R sound at all, the letter R. We don't do R, it's just an open long vowel. We are here. And then the other version, O-U-R, is an adjective. It's the plural possessive form of we. So basically you'd say that's our house, that's our house. And this is our office. Um, these are our bears. If I'm talking about me and another person, um, these are our bears. These are our children. Um, this is our job. This is what we do. Okay, nice and simple. Um, Sky says, OMG, I've misspelt the word stationary. Um, Sky, don't worry. Do you know, I, I'm sure that when I taught the classroom lesson, I think I may have misspelt stationary as well. So, you know, this is what I mean. These are so commonly mistaken, even with natives. So don't you worry yourself. Don't you worry your pretty little head. That's a phrase that I use quite a lot. Don't you worry your pretty little head. Um, oh, Amal says, what about our? So when you have, that's an interesting one actually. So when you have this word, with this word, when you have the other version of the pronunciation our, then it sounds like this, our. Yes, it's a really good point. I'm going to remove it for now, but yes. Okay, so the next one is compliment, compliment. And this is another one that I probably misspell sometimes. So when it's spelt with an I, compli, compliment, compliment it means to say something nice and like for example you guys sometimes send me a lot of compliments during the lesson so I'll, I'll get lots of very nice things written in the comments box and um, it's always nice to hear some of the nice things that you have to say saying that you enjoyed the lesson that you think I'm a good teacher that you um, learnt a lot and you are complimenting me you give me a compliment so to compliment is to say something nice about someone or something. You might compliment the food. So say, oh, this food tastes great. That's complimenting the food. To say something nice. Okay. And when you com when something compliments, when something compliments something else, so when it's spelt with an E, it means it goes well with. So you might say, Anna, that top compliments your hair colour. That top goes well with the colour of your hair. 
Or you might say, that lipstick complements your top. So they go well together. They work well together. I might even refer to people in that way. I might say, um, you complement each other, meaning that you work well together. You, you can't, they complement each other very well. So they work together very well. Okay? So, complement and complement, both exactly the same pronunciation, but different spellings and slightly different meanings. Um, patrons, are you okay? You're very quiet. How are you finding this lesson? Easy? Or are you learning something that you didn't know before? Always good to know. So the next one we have is red. Red. Red and red. Now, red, this one, is the past tense of read. Interesting that, isn't it? They're the same spellings, but different pronunciations. That makes it a different type of word, which we'll cover in another lesson. But here, read is the past tense of read, and we're talking about when you're looking at and understanding the written word. So you read books, you read magazines, you read other people's writing, you might read a lesson, you might read subtitles. So you read, um, and then in the past tense, it is read when you've done it in the past, and that sounds exactly the same as this word, red, which is the colour. So red and red. Very confusing. <laughs> and the only way you really know what someone means is through the context. So you'll know through the context. So the next homophone is coarse. Coarse. And we have two versions here, coarse and coarse. This version of the word means rough or not smooth. So if I had a beard, and that means to have hair on my face, if I had a beard, it would be strange because I'm a lady and ladies generally don't have beards. Some do. Um, but usually a beard is something a man has. If he then shaves off his beard, he cuts off his beard, or shaves, and then it grows back a little bit and you rub his skin, his skin might feel coarse. It would feel rough not smooth. So his skin might feel coarse. Coarse. Okay. And the other version of the word coarse, there are a few different versions of it, um, meanings for it. But coarse would generally mean a root. So you could say um, uh, a race course is a place which where you go round and round and round a race course. Uh, or you could say, which course did you go? Which course did you go over? And it's a set route. It's a set way to drive or to walk or to run. So if I'm running in a marathon, for example, there will be a set course, a set route that I have to go on. And then course can also mean like the learning process, the, the academic um, arrangement, a course. You sign up for a course. You start your course. You learn on your course and then you end the course, usually with an exam, and hopefully you'll pass the course. So course and course. Okay. So the next homophone that we're looking at is peace. Peace. Um, not as commonly confused, but I thought I'd add it in anyway. This version, of course, means calm, harmonious and quiet. It can mean um, to not be at war, to be at peace. We use peace when we're talking about someone who's died. We'd say rest in peace. So have calm, quiet, rest in peace. Um, and yes, if you are if you're a mum and you have lots of children or you're a teacher and there's lots of children being very noisy, you might put your hands over your ears and say, please, can I have some peace and quiet? meaning, can you just be quiet? I've got a headache. Can I have some peace and quiet? I need some peace and quiet. Oh, I love the peace and quiet. And then the other version of the word, of course, is this version, and it means a section, a fragment of the whole. So the first example that comes to mind is a piece of cake. And a piece of cake is also an idiom, which means something's very easy. It's a piece of cake. So it's not the whole cake, it's just one piece. All right, so peace and peace. 
So Hassan has said, please upload this video. I'm going to work. Don't worry if you can't stay for the whole lesson. This lesson will stay on the channel as a recorded video. So as we're live now, it's being recorded and it will stay on the channel. So you can go back and repeat the lesson if you miss something or pick the lesson up whenever you have time. So don't panic and have a good day at work. All right, so let's carry on. If you have questions, save them for the end and I'll help you at the end. So the next one is whole, whole. Now the first version of the word with a W, this W is obviously silent. We just start with the aspirate H, <laughs> whole. And whole means entire or all of. So, for example, one of my viewers, who I hope is still watching now, often talks about the entire day. So he might say, I spent the entire day working. Um, but what he would say is, I spent the whole, the whole, the day, the whole, the day. And what he should say is, I spent the whole day. I spent the entire day, I spent the whole day working. So think of whole meaning entire. I spent the whole day working. I spent the whole day trying to solve a problem. Um, I spent the whole day sleeping. I spent the whole day relaxing. Or you could say all of the day. I spent all of the day relaxing. I spent all of the day sleeping. So when we say all of, we say the. But when we use whole or entire, we just remove the and say the day. I spent the whole day sleeping. Or you might talk about a car journey. We spent the whole journey talking. We spent the whole journey singing. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. The other version of the word whole, whole, is a hollow place. So I hope that I will never get a hole in my top. But if I catch it on something and it rips, then there will be a hole. There is a hole in the top of my skates. The hole is where I put my foot. My foot goes in the hole in my shoe or in my skate. Okay, I have a hole in my ear. I have a hole up my nose. Okay, so hole, very simply, a hollow place. Now, these two can be quite confusing, can't they? They both have a schwa beginning. So a schwa is this sound, uh, uh, and we say accept, accept. And so it can be confusing. Which version do we use? To accept with an a ah sound, a, ah, we do use a schwa when we're actually talking, but the accept with an a ah means to receive, to receive, to have, to take. Um, so you might say, I accept your invitation. I will, I will go. I, I accept your invitation. Or if someone apologizes and says, I'm so sorry that I upset you, you say, I accept your apology. I accept your apology. I will receive it. I will acknowledge it. Okay. I accept your apology. Stop worrying. Um, or you could accept a delivery. If a postman comes around and goes, do, 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 knock, knock, knock. Hello, I've got um, I've got a package here. I've got a package here for for Miss Anna English. Is that you? And I say, oh yes, that's me. And I accept the delivery from the postman. And say thank you very much, Mr. Postman. Bye. So I accept. I receive. If you use the word accept with an e x at the beginning, that means to exclude. So it's completely different. It's a preposition. It means exclude. So I could say. You can all come to my, you can all come to my lesson except you because you have been naughty in your in detention. So you can all come to my lesson, but I exclude you, except you. Or I might say, I will be live on the YouTube channel every single day except for Saturday and Sunday because I'm going to chill out and have fun at the weekend. Hopefully that makes sense. So accept is either to receive or to exclude. Okay. So patrons, you're very quiet today. Very, very quiet. Anyway. Okay. Let's carry on. So we have bear, bear. 
Um, this is another one that I sometimes get confused with myself and um, very easily the first version of the word bear is a large mammal. So in parts of America I know they have big grizzly bears or they have black bears. Do you have bears in your country? We don't have bears here in the UK apart from in special animal sanctuaries or zoos um, but are bears native to your country? Let me know. The other version of the word bear, the other meaning for this particular spelling is the act of holding or supporting. So you might say the plant or the tree bears fruit in the springtime. The tree bears fruit in the springtime. So it, it supports, it holds fruit, it bears fruit. Um, Sometimes you'd say the phrase, I can't bear it. I hear that a lot. I can't bear it. And that means I can't support it. I can't stand it. It's driving me crazy. I, I don't like it. I can't, I can't support this anymore. I can't bear it. And then the other version of the word bear basically means naked. So it means without clothes on. And this might be used when you're talking about just seeing skin. So I might have a, sometimes I wear a vest top, so you'll see that I have, um, you can see my arms, so I don't have something covering my arms, and then you'd say, she had bare arms, or if you can see my legs, if I have my legs exposed, I would, you would say, she has bare legs, she has bare legs, okay? So bare basically means to not be covered, or to be naked, bare. Um... All right, so the next homophone, how are we doing for time? We've been here for 36 minutes. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, Tasha, just to be careful, um, uh, bear, B-A-R-E, means naked, not the other way around. Okay. Um, but I, I find it confusing. It confuses me all the time. Anyway, let's carry on. So allowed is the next one. Allowed. Allowed. Um, and this one, this version of allowed means to say it out loud. So when you're at school, normally the teacher would ask you to all open your books at the same page and then she might say, hey you, stand up and read out, read aloud to the class. So she wants you to stand up and read out loud not just read quietly, but read out loud to everybody what is written in the book. So to read aloud, to read aloud. Um, and then we have allowed, meaning permission. So if you are allowed to do something, it means you have permission to do it. So if you try to leave the class in the middle of a lesson, um, I might say, it's all right, you are allowed to leave whenever you want. It is all right. You're allowed to leave whenever you want. Just make sure you've pressed subscribe and given this video a thumbs up. But you're allowed to do whatever you want, of course, because it's your choice. So you have permission to do whatever you want. It's your choice. Okay, so um, the next one we have is which, which. Now, these two are often... Um, often commented on by my um, by my students who are often asking me about the pronunciation of these or which one is which and the first one is a pronoun um, we use it when referring to things or animals so for example um, I might say this or this is my favorite bear which I bought in um, in France it's not true it's just a statement but this is my favorite bear which I bought in France, or um, this is my new hair colour, which I had done on Thursday. Again, it's not true, but um, that's what I could say, and I use which as a pronoun when talking about a thing or an animal. Um, then we have where then we have which meaning when questioning choice. So if you have a choice between two things, I might say to you, which one, which one do you want? Which one do you want? Do you want this one? 
or do you want that one? So, viewers, which bear do you prefer? Do you prefer, prefer Bernard or do you prefer Benjamin? Which one is your favourite bear? Which? Which one? They're both my favourites. So, which as questioning choice. And then we also have the version of the word which is slightly different in spelling, same pronunciation, and it basically means a scary or nasty person, usually a female. Usually a female. A witch is normally a female. And in cartoons or films, witches tend to have superpowers. And they're like, ha 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 ha. They might have a long nose and warts. These spots on their skin. And they're, like, nah. and they're normally quite unpleasant looking. So a witch is a scary or nasty person. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So the next one... Oh, that's it. That's it. Whoa, we got through it. Okay. So um, the next thing I wanted to talk to you about was the fact that homophones are often used to create puns. Puns. Now, in the UK, we have, a, we have quite a sarcastic sense of humour. We also love memes and we love puns. And a pun is a play on words. A pun is when you take a word and you, you're very clever with it, and you change it to create something that's entertaining. So it's like a joke. It's kind of like a joke, but it's a play on words. So playing with words using homophones. So I've done some examples for you to give you an idea of what a pun actually is, because it's hard to explain. Um, so here are some examples. So a pun example. Here is one sentence that is a pun. It says, to write with a broken pencil is pointless. To write with a broken pencil is pointless. Now, of course, the word pointless means um, it has no meaning. It has, it's, it's a, sorry, it's a waste of time. So pointless can mean a waste of time. But pointless can also mean to not be sharp. It doesn't have a sharp end. It doesn't have a sharp point. Now, I don't have a pencil, but I do have a pen. If this was a pencil, the end here is the point. It's a sharp end, the point. And if it's pointless, that means it's blunt. It has no point. So that end is pointless. Can you see? That end is pointless. So I'm saying to write with a broken pencil, it's a waste of time. It's pointless. But what I'm actually saying is it's pointless. So it's supposed to be funny. You see? I hope everyone understands that. I'm sure some people will understand it very easily and other people might still be a little bit, mm, what? Um, so the next pun I've written for you is the dead batteries were given out free of charge. The dead batteries were given out free of charge. Now, free of charge can mean um, without payment. So if I give you something free of charge, like this lesson, I'm giving you this lesson free of charge, it means I'm not going to charge you a fee. You don't have to pay for it. So it was given to you free of charge. However, the word charge can also mean, it's a homophone, and it can mean um, when a battery is, when a battery has charge, it means it's full, it's ready to operate. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it, but a battery that's full of charge, that's fully charged, is ready to operate and it will work. A battery that has no charge um, is a dead battery. It doesn't work. It won't operate your whatever you want it to operate, your, your light or your radio um, or your phone. Phone batteries usually die very quickly. So a dead battery is free of charge. That means it has no charge. But also, the dead batteries were given out free of charge, meaning they, they weren't paid for. So it has two meanings, you see? Hopefully, hopefully I've explained that well. I feel like I'm explaining it very, very badly. Um, and the last one that I've put here for you is, I thought, very funny. The butcher backed up into the meat grinder and got a little behind in his work. So, the butcher... A butcher is a, a person, a, a, a worker who works with meat. So they work with meat. They usually sell it and cut it, cut it up for you and sell it to you. So a butcher sells meat, deals with and sells meat. 
If you back up, in this context, it means you can reverse. So you're, if I back up now, I back right up here. So to reverse. So the butcher reversed into the meat grinder. The meat grinder is the machinery that cuts the meat or, or I don't know how it cuts it, but it all grinds the meat. So it takes bits of meat off the main carcass so that you have lots of bits of meat. So the butcher reversed into the meat grinder and got a little behind in his work. Got a little behind in his work. Now this sentence on face value means he was, it, to get behind in something is to be late. So if I get behind in my work, it means I haven't kept up to time. Maybe I haven't hit my deadlines or maybe everyone else is ahead of me. Everyone else has done more work than me. So I am behind in my work. I'm a little behind, I'm a little bit behind everybody else. But the word behind is a homophone and it can also mean your bottom. So the butcher backed up into the meat grinder, zzz, boop, and he got a little bit of his behind in his work because his work is meat. You get it? He got a little of his behind in his work and someone probably ate it. They ate his bottom. Ooh. <laughs> I thought that one was very funny. Um, so hopefully, hopefully you understand that one. Uh, okay, so those of you who've dropped a super chat, you can ask me to send you these notes and I will gladly send them over to you, no problem. And um, I'm just gonna jump over to patrons, what you're saying here. Today is a very interesting lesson, so we do not want to spend time for writing questions. Okay, I understand, thank you. I'm glad you're finding it useful or found it useful because it's now coming to an end. And Eva, hello. Yes, I agree. Great lesson, Anna. Thank you. Oh, bless. You guys are so sweet. Thank you. I'm glad that you found it useful. Uh, okay, so I'm going to spend a few moments just quickly answering any questions that you have on homophones. And then I will wrap up because I have some private lessons to do. So, um, just while I'm waiting for you to put your questions and comments into the comment box, I'm going to say thank you for joining the lesson. If you are new here, please make sure you press subscribe and that bell notification button, which is next to subscribe, to make sure that you don't miss out on future lessons. I'm trying to go um, live at least two or three times a week, if not Monday to Friday, every day. And I've also got some really great pre-recorded lessons coming up very soon as well. So don't miss out on those. And we've now hit over 200 videos on this channel. So if you haven't seen them all, go back and take a look. If you just go onto my homepage and click on the video tab, you'll see lots and lots of lessons there to choose from. Some are live, some are pre-recorded, some are long, some are short. I'm sure there's something for everyone here. If you have any particular lessons that you would really like to see, Remember, I'm not a huge fan of teaching grammar rules because natives don't know grammar rules. I'd rather teach you in a different way. But if you have any topics or anything you're really struggling with or words that you want the pronunciation of, put it in the comments box below. And if I can't answer you right now, live, then I will make a video about it in the future. In fact, I've started making a list of all the things you're suggesting and asking for, and I will slowly work through that entire list. Jefferson says, what does wrap up mean? To wrap something up means to end it. So if I'm doing a broadcast and I say I'm wrapping up, then it means I'm ending the lesson. I'm going to put it to an end. Um, Amal says, regarding quite and quiet homophones, question? No. So quite is quite nice. Um, then that's quite and quiet. Different pronunciation. Quite, quiet, shh, quite. Quite nice, quiet, quite, quiet, quite, quiet. Can you hear the difference? Quite quiet. Um, explaining a joke usually kills it. Yes, I know, strong way. I know, I know. But um, I think it's important that people understand what a pun is. Um, I didn't understand what puns were until I was an adult, actually. People tried to explain it to me, but I didn't get it. And it's only when I became an adult 
and I had to teach puns to some drama students that I understood what they actually were. So sorry for killing the jokes and feel free to put your favourite puns down in the comments box below and give us all a good laugh. Um, uh, what else do we have? Are so and saw homophones. Uh, um, Arabella, the word so, so let's get on with today's lesson or that was so nice, S-O, is the same as the word S-E-W, which is to, to, with a needle and thread, to bring two pieces of material together, to sew. So I sew my clothes but saw is a different word, different pronunciation, different word. So and so, the same. Saw, I saw you, or I saw a piece of wood in half. But there you go, that's a homophone. To saw something, and I saw you, that's a homophone. But that has the same spelling. So it's a homonym, 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 homonym. So hard, these words to say. Um... I hope this video has subtitles as Reshan. Um, subtitles take a little while to to arrive when it's live. So maybe in a few hours there'll be subtitles. And if you want to do subtitles in your language, you're more than welcome to contribute subtitles to any of the videos that are on my channel. You just go to the video that you want to give subtitles to, click on more underneath the video and add subtitles. That would be amazing. To have subtitles in your language would be great and really helpful. Um, a uh, difference between ambiguity and pun. Mm, I think you're better off looking up ambiguity in the dictionary because that's a really hard one to explain. Um, oh, oh gosh, so many comments just popped through. Of course, a course on a course, course would take us off course in this course. Very good little tongue twist that you've come up with there, Neve. Really nice. Um, could you please give examples of English humour? So a pun is an example of English humour. Um, but I'll do a whole lesson on English humour because it's it's a big subject. Anna, when will you go live on Verba Vocal on your other channel? Um, probably around six o'clock I'm going live on Verba. So I hope you're going to join me there. Uh, Long says thanks a lot, Anna. You're welcome. Thanks, Anna. Says so Sonam. You're welcome. Um, if you enjoyed this, then please do show your appreciation by giving it a thumb. And if you think anyone else would find this useful, and I would say that most people would find this useful, even natives would find this useful, please do click that share button. Um, that's all I ask is that you help me to grow this community so that other people can benefit from free English education. Um, Wati, thank you. You're very welcome. Take care. Uh, Vishal, nails means little iron rods. Um, yes, a nail, a nail is a little, you nail something into the wall. It's a little piece of metal. Ah, la, la. Um, lots of messages. Uh, could you please say out loud, photograph, photograph. And the person who takes the photograph is a photographer, photographer. And the subject of doing photographs is photography, photography. So you might study photography if you are a photographer. Um, a press pass, a press pass, a screen, to hold hands, to go mad, excuse me, and can you take a photo of me? So you wanted some pronunciation there. I hope that helped. Um, Hab Habiba says, a lesson on gestures and body language, please. <gasps> what a great idea. So good. I'm going to write it in my book right this second. I love it when someone comes up with a good idea. So gestures, body language. Thank you for that suggestion. There you go. It's number 28 on the list. But I might do it sooner than 28. So you won't have to wait too long. Um, it's and it's. Yeah, there. I think I have done a video on it's and it's. What the difference is, but the pronunciation is exactly the same. And therefore, they are homophones. Well done. Um... Um, uh, what is the difference? Uh, no, hang on. So clarify about bear and bear. So from my research, bear and bear, obviously both pronounced the same, but you have a bear, like this is a bear, spelt B-E-A-R, bear. 
but also to bear can mean to support or hold. Um, so I might say to you, here's a common phrase, bear with me, bear with me. I just mean hold on. So just ho hold, wait, hold, hold on for one moment, bear with me, bear with me. Um, it's the same spelling, just slightly different meanings, but same spelling. And then you have bear spelt B-A-R-E, B-A-R-E, which means um, without cover, naked. Yeah, I'm sure there are other meanings as well, but those are the main meanings. So um, to be barefoot, they, were, they walked barefoot through the grass. That means they had naked feet. Okay. Um, uh, what else do we have? Uh, do, do, do. Can we r replace me too by, by so do I or so have I? Yes, you could say, um, uh, I really loved this lesson. You could say, me too. Or you could say, um, so, so, so did I, so did I. It depends on what the sentence is, but so did I would work. Um, Bashir says, can you please put these words onto a sheet? Um, well, I have done them. Um, well, I've done the, le the, the lesson notes, which are available to anyone who gave a super chat. Of course, you can always go back and repeat this lesson if you forget anything. Uh, la, 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 la. Well, lots of people being very lovely, giving me lots of nice compliments. Um, some of you joined late. If you joined late, please do go back and have a look at some of what we've covered in this lesson. It was a very important lesson. And then, um, okay, we've got some spammers in here. So we're going to remove those. Um, a lesson on self-introduction in different situations, if relevant, please. Um, yeah. Intro yourself. Yeah, okay, that's on the list. Some Shakespeare, says Jasmine. You want Shakespeare? Ooh, okay, I can do Shakespeare. Um, thanks for amazing videos. You're always elegant, and I really get benefits from these videos. Keep it up. Thank you. It's very kind. Um, lessons where you pronounce um, irregular verbs. Yes, I've already got that on the list. Eras, oh, bless you. Eras has just dropped a super chat just at the end there. Two pounds. Thank you so much. That will go into the pot and hopefully pay for a decent microphone. Um, thank you very much. And of course, you are entitled to the notes if you just drop me an email. My email's at the bottom of my description on this video. Um, also, to let you know, there are some um, helpful links in the description of this video. Um, some other videos that I think you might find helpful, as well as links to my social media and also to some free trials to get free audiobooks, which I think are essential. I'm also, I've done the free trial and now I'm actually on the actual, um, I signed up for Audible after my 30 day free trial. I managed to get through 10 books during that 30 days. I think it's great. I think anyone learning should make the most of it. Um, of course you don't have to sign up, but um, at least make the most of 30 days for free because you might get through quite a lot of books in that time. It's really helpful. But that's down in the description box below as well. Okay, guys, I'm gonna love you and leave you. I'm going to say goodbye because I need, now need to teach my lovely student who'll be waiting patiently for me to go and join her. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being patient through my technical difficulties. Um, I hope to see you all again on Monday. Yes, on Monday. Oh, no, I might be here on Sunday. <gasps> if I came in on Sunday, what time would you like me to be here? In English time, what time is good for you if I came and did a lesson on Sunday? Let me know in the comments and I might come and join you on Sunday, which I know I don't do very often, but I'm having a weekend at home. So I thought maybe I'll use some time to come and say hello and teach you a little lesson. So let me know and uh, maybe I can make it happen. Otherwise, have an incredible weekend. I will definitely be live at some point next week. If you want to know exactly when, then come and join me on Instagram and Facebook where you have more chance of knowing my schedule. Um, and make sure you've subscribed, liked and shared this video. I'm going to say goodbye. Lots of love from London. Take care, guys. Mwah, mwah, mwah.